So we want to know when we can get an implicit function. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show that there's a necessary condition for an implicit function, right? So an implicit function, uh, by, by our definition, is going to have to be well-defined in a region around some point. So the first implicit functions we'll think about are g of x, y is equal to c, right? So we have some function, some nice differentiable function g. Uh, it's differentiable, it has partials. So dg dx and dg dy exist or in continuous. So these will be continuous functions, right? Uh, and I have uh, that my constraint essentially puts me on some level set or level curve of this function, right? Well, if, if these guys are continuous, right? If this, is, if this is all continuous, that means that if I vary x and I vary y, then c doesn't change all that much, right? Well, then we would expect that if I have g of x comma y of x, is equal to c, right? Then whatever this y of x is, it's going to be a differentiable function of x. Because ultimately we have this showing up. If it weren't a nice continuous differentiable function of f, then we would not expect that this resulting function is equal to this, partially because we know the chain rule, and the chain rule will include the derivative of this guy with respect to x. Um, so we believe, then we expect a y of x to be differentiable if uh, it exists. Right? We expect that to happen. Let's go to our example of a nice horrible function. So our g of x y is equal to that function we were looking at, x to the fourth plus 2x squared, y squared, plus 2xy, plus y, and we're going to set c equal to 100 here. Well, first you need to find a point on, uh, on the graph of this, right? So you need to find an x and a y that satisfies this before you can even start talking about an implicit function in, in the region around x. Uh, well, if I look at it, if I set x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 100, I'm going to actually be a point on this because all my x's, x terms will cancel out, my y is equal to 100. So, so this satisfies g of 0, 100 is equal to 100. That's great. And so now I'm going to try and find an explicit function. So we want... Uh, an implicit function. We just need to know that it's there. We just need to know that it's there, and then we could use computational strategies to figure out what the values are around it. So we want an implicit function uh, y of x such that y of 0 is equal to 100. Right? And and it's well defined for all the y nearby 0. All, I mean, all the x nearby 0, of course. So we want that implicit function. And we can derive, actually, a, a necessary condition, right? Uh, and the way we're going to do that is now we're going to think of this expression as x to the fourth plus 2x squared y of x squared plus 2x y plus y of x plus y of x is equal to 100. So this is, both sides of this equation are a function of x. So we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. We're going to differentiate both sides of this guy with respect to x. d dx of x to the fourth plus 2x squared y of x squared plus 2xy of x plus y of x. Remember, what, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to another, so we can differentiate everything in an equation as long as we're differentiating both sides. 
And of course, this will collapse to zero because that's a constant. This guy, however, well, we have to use a uh, use product rule, whatever. So, um, so when we use the product rule, I'm just going to go through and differentiate all the x terms, right, uh, and see what we would get with a product rule. So the product rule, where we're just considering the x terms out front, will give me four x cubed plus four x y of x squared plus 2y of x, right? That's just the differentiation of the y terms. And then I'll have, when I differentiate, uh, so this is differentiation of just the x terms. When I differentiate the y terms, I'll get a y prime of x popping out by the chain rule. And I'll differentiate all these guys, and I'll get 4x y, x squared y of x plus now I just have one y of x here, so it'll be 2x plus 1, and that's all equal to 0. And now I'm just going to solve for y of x, y prime of x, because I have it just by itself. The chain rule gave me that for free. So now y prime of x is equal to, well, we subtract off this term, we divide by this term, we get negative 4x squared y of x plus 2x plus 1 divide by 4x cubed plus uh, sorry sorry I messed up a little bit so this should be 4x uh, this is this is this is a horrible mistake so I, I accidentally put the uh, the numerator uh, or the denominator as the numerator so this will be minus remember this term is the minus here 4x cubed plus 4 x y of x squared plus 2 y of x divide by now this will be in the numerator or the denominator so 4 x squared y of x plus 2 x plus 1 and that's great so in particular at y prime of 0 what do I have here well uh, all the x's will collapse to 0 and y is going to be 200 so this term dies, this term dies, I have 200 up here, this term dies, this term dies, I just have 1, so I get negative 200, which does not equal 0. That's good. Well, um, and well, it could be 0 as well, it doesn't matter. That, that, it, that doesn't matter. Um, what matters is that it's a number, right? And uh, what, what could be bad is that this could be 0, right? This would not be defined if this were 0. So a necessary condition, right, a necessary condition uh, for uh, having this implicit function, right, is that one, it should be differentiable, and two, that derivative should actually exist because it's a, it's a nice differentiable function. And it's not going to exist if this term was zero. Well, let's, let's abstractify what we did here, right? Let's abstractify what we did here. Well, we just used the chain rule, essentially. We said... D, uh, dg, we took the partial derivative dg dx, uh, where, where g was a, uh, so I want to say d dx of g of x y of x, right? And we just use the chain rule. This is equal to dg dx 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 plus dg dy dy dx and what's that going to be equal to? well that's dg dx 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 is 1 plus dg dy y prime that's just y prime and so this was uh, this we set equal to 0 right so this is 0 that implies that y prime at that point will have to be equal to negative dg dx over dg dy. And so we see exactly that the partial derivative of g with respect to y cannot die, cannot be zero at that point if I have a nice well-defined function, which should then have a well-defined derivative. 
And this brings us to the implicit function theorem, or our, our first form of the implicit function theorem. So we've seen the linear implicit function theorem, and now we've got a full one. So suppose g of x, y is c1 function, so it, it has a continuous derivative around uh, x not y not. Suppose g of x y is equal to c and dg dy x y is equal to does not equal zero then first of all a we have that uh, then there is a function So, so we have to have x not y not is not equal to zero. Well, these should be in the in the subscript. Then there is a function y of x with y of x not equal to y not such that the following things hold. The first thing is that g of x y of x satisfies the constraint and and of course we want to assume that these guys are also equal to c right so g of x y of x is equal to the constraint b y of x not of course is equal to x uh, y not of course and c finally d y over d x evaluated at x naught is equal to negative d g d x evaluated at x naught y naught divided by d g d y evaluated at x naught y naught. So this tells you that all we need to know, all we need to know is that I can use y as a linear approximation of the function. I can get a linear approximation of the function using y, right? If if this were zero, it would not be the case that I can do that, right? Because I would have, I would have essentially, I'd be trying to do a linear approximation of y with a straight line, which would not fly. Uh, and that's the beauty of the implicit function theorem. It, it's a very simple constraint. If I can take a derivative and calculate it, then I know that that function will exist. And if I can't, I know that function most likely does not exist.